and these who are facing their immediate loss of life, of course, have this idea, my life is about to be poured out. And we, of course, can think about that and think about what's it like to be anticipating the prospect of your own martyrdom as people like Paul and Huss and certainly many, many others through history and indeed even today are facing. And there is this idea, of course, that comes to our mind that there is a sacrifice. We think of sacrificing, you know, in the Old Testament, animals were sacrificed, Christ himself sacrificed. And we hear in the New Testament that we are called to offer ourselves, offer our bodies a living sacrifice. And that this is a daily state of mind that we Christian people are to embrace. I suppose it drives the point home somewhat more dramatically. If I knew somehow or other that tomorrow I was going to be burned at the stake, I might have a more immediate sense of the sacrificial aspect of living a Christian life. Sometimes we worry about that. What would I do? You know, what would you do? What would I do? God has given grace, remarkable grace, to ordinary people like you and me down through history, and he's doing so to this day. So I think we can take comfort in that, that if something like that were to take place, God will give you the grace. But the point I think we need to bear in mind is that every day is a day of martyrdom, isn't it? Every day is a day when Jesus says, take up your cross. Take up the means of your own execution today. Follow me today. Let your life be poured out as a libation today. And if today happens to be the day of the ultimate sacrifice, so be it. If not, then it's still a day in which I am in a state of mind that would be appropriate to letting my life be poured out. Illusion of Gaia was a game I played when I was very young. It's, well, at least in my mind, it's a classic action RPG for the SNES. The scene you just watched was a part of the game that really changed me as a person, but I didn't know it when I first seen it. So in case you weren't paying attention, a very desperate uh, people... Uh, are trying to survive on land that is becoming less and less forgiving and more and more hostile to their habitating it. Uh, so they are 
you know, they find our heroes sleeping in their homes, and they decide to do what we would describe as unthinkable, and they are resolute to eat the intruders so they don't starve. Now, I'll, I'll grant you, the scene is a bit sloppily written and could use a few improvements. Maybe Hamlet, the pig, escapes as he sees the villagers returning from the hunt or, you know, whatever they were doing or wherever they were. Um, it doesn't make much sense for the villagers to instantly <laughs> resort to cannibalism when there is a, you know, when there's a pig there that they could roast and eat. Um, you know, especially considering... Uh, after the scene, it, it says that Hamlet would be enough to, to feed them. So it really doesn't make sense for them to resort to cannibalism with, with Hamlet there. But, you know, if you just do a simple rewrite and, you know, if Hamlet's out of the frame and he escapes, or he escapes and he's out of frame and then he jumps into the fire from the bushes or the forest or whatever, the jungle, it would make, it would make a lot more sense. But, um, you know, I, I do think... This does a reasonably good job of getting the point across, right? Uh, you know, as uh, I'm ashamed to admit that as a kid, I hated the villagers. You know, and right after this cutscene, I wanted to attack them for what happened. To ha I wanted to attack and kill all of the villagers. And uh, you know, the, the pig. You know, he's a pig, but he, he'd been with you the whole game up to this point. Like basically the entire game. Uh, he traveled across, you know, uh, all the landscapes, and he went all he went on all the adventures with you, and it was traumatizing to see him die like that. It was it was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, but I eventually accepted that the game wouldn't let me do that. It just doesn't let you do that, you know. Uh, so, you know, I basically channeled that anger into into trying to conquer the next dungeon. Uh, which was Anchor Watt, but that's besides the point. Uh, so as an adult, you know, I have a much better grasp of reality and difficult circumstances that people find themselves in, uh, and I find that I have much more compassion than I did as a kid, which I think most people are going to find that, hopefully. So, th you know, these people were desperate, they were scared, they were losing loved ones left, right, and center to disease and starvation. And uh, monsters, too, I believe. Uh, monsters from Anchor Wat would attack them. But anyway, um, you know, they had seen way, way more trauma than the characters who are intruding, you know, like Will and Kara and Eric. Way more trauma than them. And, uh, you know, there's barely enough food in this land for them to survive. So, you know, looking back on it, it's like, you know, I understand. I understand why they came to this conclusion. It's a deeply sad situation, but to think that I valued a pig's life over the lives of that whole village, it shakes me pretty hard. Um, e even while making this video and revisiting these hauntingly sad memories, my eyes still managed to conjure up tears for this sloppily written yet intensely sorrowful scene. It makes me examine my own complacency when it comes to the suffering and desperation of those who aren't digital. Uh, the tragic circumstances we hear about that real people go through on a daily basis. Oftentimes I find myself wanting to help, but always find myself unable. I have to remind myself and admit to myself that I'm barely able and well, not even really able to take care of myself. And uh, I guess I use that as an excuse sometimes, too, for why I, you know, can't or don't do anything to end the misery of others. Um, but a few months ago, um, I, decided, I decided to donate a kidney as a Good Samaritan donor. Um, and it was probably the, no, it was, it was the best decision I made in my life besides accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But something tells me that it's not enough. I know it's not enough. I, I can't help but think deeper about how much more I can give up but find myself clinging to, cling to preserve. 
uh, I often ask myself, how much of my comfort am I really willing to compromise for others? How much of my time am I willing to spend to mend a broken heart? I hope this video will compel you to ask yourself those same questions. And if you are a Christian, I hope you will also ask yourself, what are you willing to give up to God? Well, I intend to do some more videos like this about self-sacrifice and, and pop culture in the future. So if you, if you like this video, uh, keep your eyes open for that.